and I think there's there's a positive and a benefit to this. So uh, the positive was I was refusing to back down and become a victim of this thing. I think that's a very important mindset to have is when we are given this label, often it can really make us feel like we are weak and we are victims and our whole identity becomes this label. I don't think that's a positive way to look at it. But on the flip side, I think we still do have to be kind to ourselves in a way and allow ourselves recovery when we need it, which I wasn't doing for myself. And I would just basically run myself into the ground to the point where I'd catch some other form of illness. So it might be the common cold or a flu or something. But I would take a lot longer than the average person to recover from this illness. Obviously because it's compounded from the chronic fatigue that I'm struggling with. And I never really talk to anyone about this. A lot of people don't know that I have this illness. I've been working in gyms for nearly 10 years now. The public perception on me is he's just this fit guy that can run and, you know, do jumping pull-ups and and a lot of people think, oh, you know, he's lucky, it comes easy for him. A lot of the, that public perception on myself personally is that it's just easy and it just comes naturally. But part of the reason why I want to share this story is that we all have different battles that we're going that we're going through in our personal lives whether we're discussing them with other people or not and so we have to be just just kind to our common to our you know our fellow human being everyone's going through silent battles but we shouldn't feel alone and we should be uh, honest with ourselves if we're going through these certain things but at the same time, don't let these things hold you back. I think there's a real fine balancing act here. Not becoming a victim, doing the best you can, believing in yourself, but also needing to allow, uh, allow that time for recovery and self-reflection and self-care. Uh, things that are that are luckily, thankfully, being talked about more, more nowadays, and it needs to be translated into the chronic fatigue uh, overall perception on what we are capable of with this illness because it does not have to define us and I really hope that I can give you some hope you watching at home today if you are still struggling with this illness it's 2023 now, I'm 32 years old, and I can honestly say this is the healthiest I've ever been. I still struggle, I've, I still get relapses with chronic fatigue, I still have to balance it, but I feel that I'm on this positive upwards trajectory with it. And this is, tw this is over 20 years of having this illness now. So even though it's been a long time, I'm still recovering, I'm still getting better. So there's, I truly believe down to my core that there is hope for everyone. And this is because I am getting more and more disciplined with my lifestyle. It does take work, it takes conscious effort having to make better choices. But we, if we live in a, in a world where we have access to healthier foods or you know, if we have that privilege of being able to make these conscious decisions to improve our sleep or multiple different factors that make up our health, then we have hope. And so what I want to discuss now is something that was really life changing for me. And it was a video that I stumbled across years ago and it was called The Biology of Belief. So it's by Dr. Bruce Lipton and he's a pioneer in helping to push forward the progression of biology and epigenetics and the understanding of human potential, more specifically in how our perception shapes our biology. He's got a two and a half hour lecture on YouTube. I'll link it in this description box if you're interested in watching it. It's really life changing. It's absolutely mind blowing. Uh, he also has a, 
uh, YouTube channel with more sort of short form videos if you want something more quickly digestible that way but I highly recommend checking it out and absorbing this crucial knowledge in how much our mind state dictates our overall body's health and this is something that I think has been instrumental in helping me helping me in my recovery process and dealing with chronic fatigue and helping me to make better decisions because I have that belief in myself and it's something that can't be it's not something that's developed overnight uh, it's something that we have to work on consciously and make sure tr that we're trying to override these processes in our brain our default processes that are subconsciously working every single day whether they're working against us or for us we can consciously change them over time and these changes in our perception in the world are going to ultimately allow us to make better habits and make them lifelong and it's these lifelong habits that we can adapt into our lives that are ultimately going to make up our overall health our perception on the world and give us some hope we all need a little bit more hope in this world we need a bit more love in this world and that's going to allow us to live a life of more growth and vitality and that's ultimately what i hope for everyone i wish that we could it could all be that simple and we could all live that way but we have to at some point acknowledge that we have to take that responsibility into our own hands and we have to be our own doctor in some in some way shape or form we have to be responsible for our own health and it takes that first step of just believing that it's possible that is the hardest thing to overcome is believing that it's possible and believing it deep down and in, into our core and that is what's going to be the fire that's what's going to initiate our change in our life and like I said if we're dealing with chronic fatigue it is a case of waves it's up and down and it's something that I still have to deal with and struggle with and balance every day luckily I've found myself in an industry personal training where I have this flexibility of hours so generally speaking I'm training clients in the morning I'm training them in the evening and I can go home and sleep during the day it's not an easy lifestyle when you're self-employed if you get sick you don't get holiday pay you don't get sick pay you, it, it's all up to you to manage your finances so it is difficult at times if I if I find myself over training exercising too much and I burn myself out and I get myself sick like I said if I catch the cold or the flu it takes me twice as long to recover than the average person just simply because it almost uh, sets off a relapse of chronic fatigue and and it's uh, yeah it's difficult being self-employed but the beauty of it is I've found a job that has flexible hours if I can't make it to work I have a good relationship with my clients uh, financially it makes it quite difficult but there's not really many other options for someone in my position if I was if I was employed in a regular job and I was having relapses all the time with chronic fatigue it, it would it would be a struggle so but we always just have to learn how to adapt and make make it work for ourselves we've there's always options we can always we can always strive for like I keep saying hope but there's always hope there's always something we can do and I'd like to just reference a few other people uh, that are experts in different fields that I've uh, discovered along the throughout the years trying to be on this constant search for better health better well-being human potential these are things that excite me because they give me an avenue to focus my energy and sort of forget for a moment that I have this illness and it gives me something positive to focus on so I'm just going to mention a few other names now that might help you in your journey they might be uh, sources of information that you can draw upon and 
and these people also offer practical tools that help our well-being as well so it's it's the actionable things we can do each day that give us the real uh, gives us the power in our hands to change our lives for the better so first one I want to mention is a fellow Kiwi his name's Jason Sean Bennett I've been to one of one of his seminars he came to our hometown years ago I've read his I've read a couple of his books brilliant man he's self-taught uh, basically his story is he was very sick as a kid as well I can't remember what he had but he was on multiple medications basically all of the doctors saying this is a lifelong illness you can't beat it this is the very common uh, rhetoric that we hear from doctors often unfortunately is that you're sick for the rest of your life he said no way I'm not going to accept that basically sent him on his own journey of uh, self-discovery and looking into health and he was discovering the blue zones which is the areas in the world that contain the most centenarians per capita uh, so the people who live the longest and he was studying things like that learning about fasting so prolonged fasting water fasting juice fasting what they ate their lifestyles very inspiring man uh, so that's one person I'd like to reference it's really helped me in uh, developing more knowledge around nutrition and fasting next one who's become very famous in recent years is Andrew Huberman he's a neuroscientist he has amazing podcasts and he gives out so much free information on things we can do that range from improving our sleep uh, like his conversation with Dr. Matthew Walker, absolutely brilliant, the power of sleep and how it heals us. Cold exposure, heat exposure, dealing with jet lag and altering our circadian rhythm and, and trying to keep a steady sleep schedule. Different strength training protocols and just a very wide, wide range of different things we can do to improve our overall well-being and he gives up-to-date scientific facts along with practical tools so absolutely brilliant source of information another person I like to reference is Rhonda Patrick she is a doctor in biomedical science I think I first discovered her when she was talking about nutrition seems to be very unbiased which is can be quite hard to find when we're talking about nutrition sometimes people have certain interests in selling their supplements that fall under a category it might be paleo or keto or carnivore or whatever it may be she seems to be very unbiased very scientific up to date with recent studies and she also branches out into a much wider uh, spectrum of health including mental practices and d different studies on how social media affects our well-being and cold exposure which is a really hot topic nowadays and things of that nature so she's a great source of information on just improving our overall well-being Wim Hof is another person I'd love to mention he has a really amazing story on personal tragedy and overcoming this and really being a pioneer in pushing forward the what we believe to be possible as human beings and his breathing practices and how he how he has performed extreme feats of endurance in the cold and ice and snow and multiple world records and basically his self uh, developed breathing techniques which have helped millions of people across the world so breathing being a very powerful tool in terms of dealing with stress and managing stress and reducing stress stress being a huge contributor to illness so when we can manage all of these things in different categories in our lives just gives us a much bigger fighting chance and this is the stuff that excites me gets me up in the morning and just keeps me hopeful that one day I will completely defeat this thing and be unshackled from its restrictions and the last person I want to reference is Iliad Kipchoge and he's another perfect example of breaking through those mental barriers that that can be imposed upon us public perceptions become 
self-limiting beliefs if we if we feed into them too much he is the only person who's ever run the marathon distance in under two hours it was in a controlled setting he had help with different paces and uh, hydration stations and things like that however he still ran a marathon in under two hours no one else has replicated this his slogan is that no human is limited and he's a perfect example of someone who lives a very disciplined very simple life but a very honorable life he's a dedicated family man like i said lives very simple very disciplined and just the epitome of performance in his field and is one of those people that you can even see through the camera you can see that human spirit and his genuine need to inspire people uh, and so when we can choose to look for information that is geared towards hope and belief it will change our lives it's, it's as simple as that it is going to be a difficult process there's no other way about it finding finding uh or going through change rather is something that is always going to be difficult no matter how inspired or excited we may be about the about the thought of the outcome and the potential that we have it is still always going to be difficult but it's always worth it because it's giving meaning to our life and it's giving us some form of hope and everyone needs more of that in this world we need more love we need more hope it's so crucial for our for humanity and so that's how i wish to conclude this video is you are capable of more than what you've been told we are all capable of more than what we've been told we need to raise this public perception on on human potential and there is many brilliant people out there spreading this message and so i wish to do the same i wish to give you that hope give you that belief i hope you look into these different people who are sharing this positive message i hope this message has really helped you and resonated with you and you can feel it and just know that we are all struggling we all have our own battles but it does not have to define us we can we can work around these things and we can hope for a better day hope for a better life it's the it's all we can do and we have to hold on to that with everything that we have in our being and so if you are struggling if this if this message has helped you if you want to know more I would love to hear from you please leave a comment on this video let me know uh, what you think about this video if you like I said if you wish to know more things I would absolutely love to make more videos on this topic different things I do day to day uh, that have helped me in my recovery process and that I'm still working on uh, I mean all of us we're a constant work in progress you know so we have to be honest with ourselves we've got to be patient with ourselves we've got to be uh, yeah we've, we've got to be patient with ourselves and understand that change is a very very slow process but we're just always chipping away at it and just slowly getting better year after year so yeah please reach out if if this if this video has helped in any way shape or form i'd love to hear your story what you do to benefit your life that can help others and let's just let's just share that love around Alrighty, so thanks so much for watching i know this is a bit off topic to my normal videos this is probably going to be quite a long video so i really hope uh people have the time and and to sit down and watch this thing uh yeah i really hope it helps and so yeah let's get this conversation rolling it's very important and we're all in this together so thanks so much for watching appreciate the support on this channel as always and let's keep doing this together guys so yeah cheers all the best